Good evening, everyone. Hello, everybody. My name is Sandy Schmidt. And I'm Lisa Burnham. And welcome to Curriculum Night for the classes of 2024, 2025, and 2026. That was our the, the fight song for Edina High School and um, played by and sung by our band teachers, middle school and high school. That was a fun way to start. Most definitely. Well, first, we'd like to thank you all for being here, and we'd like to introduce our team for you. Um, starting in ninth grade, we have two ninth grade counselors, Natalie Goldberg and Angela Kiefer, and they divide the class in half and work in a teaming model. Um, and then we have eight 10th through 12th grade counselors, um, and we are we are dividing by last name. So we have Nikki Plafkin, Erica Landers, Susan Petsimone, Dylan Hackbarth, my Burnham, Sandy Schmidt, uh, Jules Block, and Brad Richmouth. And then finally, in our office, um, acting as support staff, we have our wonderful admin assistants, Nancy Knutson, Allison Duchateau, Molly Thuma. And then today, we or this year, we also have um, extra support in our College and Career Center. Uh, Tiana Hamilton uh, works with us there. So what we really want to stress to families tonight is that registration, the registration window um, closes on February 24th at four o'clock PM. So that's Friday, a week from this coming Friday. Um, right now, this is like the kickoff so that we are giving you all the information that you will need in order to um, assist your student in getting them registered for the 2023-2024 school year. Um, tomorrow is also a critical day because tomorrow students will be getting all of the registration materials in their advisory classes. So that is going to be a key time for them to hear what changes have been made and just think about what they might need to do for next year. Um, and then finally, on Friday, the 17th, all students all teachers actually will be going through in each of the curricular areas, will be going through and talking about the next subject in in that um, in their sequence. So if in if uh, when they go to math class on Friday, they will hear about what math class they should be signing up for next year. When they go to their science class, they'll be hearing about what science class they should be signing up for next year. So that is that's the flow of what um, what tomorrow and Friday look like. And then um, students have, during that four day weekend that we have coming up, students will have opportunities to do some research on their own. We have a number of resources on Schoology and we will show you where that is, that's in our presentation. Um, but they can do some research, they can watch videos on um, from different teachers and curricular areas to find out um, what might be available to them. Um, they can also do some, you know, look at colleges and see if there are college expectations as far as what they should be taking for their sophomore, junior, or senior year. And then um, if they have additional questions, they can certainly talk with their teachers. They can talk and they can also come in and talk with us. We are going to have walk-in times 
on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from nine until noon, and then again from one until three. And that's completely on a drop-in basis. So students can come in and meet with their counselor for a short period of time and get, if they've got questions after they've done this research, they can get some of those questions answered. Again, oh, with re were you gonna say something, Sandy? No. Okay. No. Um, so the important thing about registration, we really want students to be meaningful. We want this to be meaningful and we want this to be intentional. We, um, we really decide what classes are offered and, you know, which teacher is teaching which class based on what students will register for. So it is, it is important that kids really think about it. We do understand you know, they're 14, 15, 16 years old. They may not, 17, they may not have it all figured out. That's okay. But they've got some really good ideas. And so it is important that they, that they really make, um, they really make those decisions with good thought behind them. Um, we do have a seven period class day or class, school day, just to remind you of that. So students do have the opportunity to take seven classes each semester that is considered a full course load. We do not necessarily recommend that students take seven classes each semester. We do recommend six classes, um, which would then allow students to have a student prep. The student prep really is helpful, um, especially if your kids are involved in extracurriculars, um, if they're involved in athletics, because it really just gives them time to decompress. It gives them time to go and um, talk with a peer tutor if they have questions about something that's happening in class. Um, it just gives them a time to reset and get some homework done, actually, before they go home or go on to their next thing. So we do, we do typically recommend that students take, take a student prep. Now, if you have questions about it, what have you, you can certainly, your student can certainly come in and talk to their counselor during that, um, that walk-in time on the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th. And again, like I'd said before, registration really is a total school effort. So it is a great time to use your resources to get all of those questions answered. Your teachers really want to help you. They want you to be taking the correct class next year. They want you to feel good about what you're taking. So they will definitely help answer questions and help steer your student on the right path. In order to graduate uh, from Edina High School, the classes of 24, 2024 through 2026, students need 43 semester credits. So eight of those credits are in English, seven are in social studies, six are in math, six are in science. A students, students have to take a class in personal wellness. They also have an additional wellness class they must take. They also take health, and then they have two fine arts credits. So with English classes, um, if your student is a ninth grader and they're in pre-AP English 9, next year they'll take pre-AP English 10. If they are currently 10th graders in pre-AP English 10, next year they'll be able to sign up for either U.S. Lit or AP U.S. Lit. And again, AP courses are college-level classes that are taken at the high school. Um, it definitely um, encourages students to go a little bit deeper, a little bit broader. Um, it is it is a great deal more reading, writing, um, critical thinking, etc. Um, it is important to know that you know you want to make sure that your student has balance. So if they are if they are wanting to push themselves or challenge themselves in English and they are a rising, junior, they can certainly take that AP U.S. Lit class. And then finally, as seniors, students still need to take two English credits, and they'll choose one credit from group A, which you can see on the top, and then the second column, or the second grouping is group B. So a student must have a class in group A and have a class in group B 
in order to meet um, those English requirements. With social studies, students need to earn seven semester credits. So currently, ninth graders are in either government or AP Gov. As 10th graders, students can take either regular world history, AP world history, or AP European history. Um, as juniors, students can take either US history, AP US history, or AP African American studies. And then finally, um, at some point, and lots of times students will save this for their senior year, but they'll need to take their econ class. So they can choose to take one semester of econ or they can take a full year of AP econ. In the full year AP econ course, one semester is, is predominantly dedicated to microeconomics and the next semester is uh, designated for macroeconomics. Then we have math. Um, so students need to take six credits in math at the high school in order to graduate. That is the minimum requirement for graduation purposes. I will say for college level purposes, students really, if your students are considering a four-year college and we know that many of your students are, if not most of them, right? Um, students will take four years of math. So again, if students are in intermediate algebra right now as ninth graders, they will take geometry next year. If they're in geometry right now as 10th graders or ninth graders, their next class will be algebra two. After algebra two, we have some options. Tech. Our tech support's gonna bring us to those options momentarily. There we go, thank you. Um, Students, after they are in Algebra 2, they have a bunch of, they have a few different options. So one is college algebra prep. The other option is a semester of college algebra and then a semester of trigonometry. And then the final selection would be a full year of pre-calculus. Now, if your student is in Algebra 2 right now, um, their Algebra 2 teacher will give them some suggestions as far as which math class is going to be most appropriate for them and which math class they're going to find the most success. Um, all of those college algebra and trig and pre-calc, those next classes, um, a student in pre-calc right now could move on to either next year we will have a regular calculus class we will have, we will also have, also have AP Calculus BC. And again, students will be hearing from their math teachers on Friday as far as which class might be most appropriate for them. Um, and then finally, if your student is in AP Calculus BC, next year they can certainly sign up for multivariable calculus. So really with math, it's a lot of talk with your teacher and, you know, let, let your teacher guide you and take the recommendation of your teacher as far as where you find, where they think your student will be the most successful. With science classes, this year we have our physical earth science class for ninth graders, then, uh, Sophomores will take chemistry or enriched chemistry. And if your ninth grader is in chemistry or enriched chemistry right now, you'll move on to biology or enriched biology. Um, and then in science, we also have some different um, semester long elective classes that there are a number of seniors will take those electives. Um, we will typically offer a full year of physics, but right now because of the shift in the curriculum, we don't really have a full physics program quite yet. Um, however, for students who did take physics as ninth graders, um, there is, they would have the opportunity to take AP physics if they are, if they are intending to pursue like a a degree in engineering or an additional science degree. 
Um, we also have, besides the AP physics class, we have full year AP science options in biology and in chemistry. And again, your student's science teacher on Friday will talk to them about what those next classes are, and they can answer some questions for you as far as what, um, what might be the right fit for them. And then we talked about the other required classes that students will take. They'll take a semester of health. They'll take a semester of personal wellness. They'll take an, addi an additional, sorry, wellness credit. And then they'll take their two credits in fine arts. And then finally, we have um, a number of elective opportunities. Edina has so many opportunities for kids to explore various uh, areas of interest. We have a wonderful fine arts program with art, band, choir, orchestra, and theater. We also have a very strong world language department with uh, Chinese, French, Spanish, and American Sign Language. We also have a number of business courses with DECA. Um, and then in STEM, we have computer science. We have engineering courses and different technology courses. And then, of course, in family and consumer science, that department, we have uh, a number of foods classes. We have some education courses, and we also have two levels of child psychology. So we were talking a little bit about um, the different resources that your students can certainly look at this weekend over the long um, holiday weekend, but all of these, in, all of this information will be housed on their Schoology page in the registration in the registration folder. So I would recommend sitting down with your son or daughter and clicking on that 2324 high school course registration folder. And then you're going to be able to look at the different, um, the different steps that are in there. You'll be able to see if you have information about how do I plan out all my courses, um, you know, the four-year planning worksheet, um, some opportunities to take PE, to take personal wellness and health over the summer through Edina High School. We also have some opportunities with PSEO, HTC, um, information regarding the NCAA, and our Edina Virtual Pathways program. And here is our course catalog, and you will be able to find the entire course catalog. You'll be able to click on that link um, once this presentation is live, and you can go through and read all the descriptions of the courses that are that we offer here at the high school. And then we also have a number of, um, we have four equity and inclusion specialists and cultural liaisons. We have Albert McGee, we have Blanca Diaz de, de Leon, um, we have Sely Armar Kapoor, and then we have Abdikadir Ibrahim. So those four individuals, I, we have their phone numbers listed as well. If um, you have questions for them, they are more than happy to answer those questions for you. And then finally, just going back to the schedule for the next week and a half. Tonight, obviously, you're all here learning about curriculum night and the classes that your student will take next year. Um, tomorrow will be the registration presentation and the rollout in advisory. Friday, students will get their information from their teachers as far as what classes they recommend for, um, for them to take the following school year. Over the weekend, definitely jump in and start looking at some of those resources that we have in Schoology so your students can have questions ready to go to ask their teachers. And if they have additional questions for their counselor, they can come in during our walk-in time on Wednesday, Thursday, or Friday. Our two walk-in times are from 9 to noon and from 1 to 3. So now I'm going to hand it over to Sandy, who's going to give you the nuts and bolts as far as how to get all of your course requests into Infinite Campus. 
Thanks, Lisa. Um, tomorrow in advisory, students will get a sheet that they get to write their courses down on so they can hopefully capture their first semester courses and their second semester courses um, because we want them to register for all and not forget uh, one of the semesters. So they'll have something to work from um, and their advisors will help them understand what they're doing with that. And then they will also um, take that to their classes on Friday where when their teacher makes the recommendation, they can either have their computer out and entering it into campus, or they can um, just write it down on the sheet to have a conversation with you first before they actually enter. Uh, they can go back and forth into campus as much as they want. So um, if they put some things in and then you have a discussion and that changes, you, you can go back in until Friday at 4 p.m. and make changes in there. Um, but as Lisa said, we really take the teacher's recommendation um, as the, the class that students should sign up for because they know what the next course is going to entail. So in their portal, they go into campus and then they will see on the left hand side, um, there is are many options there and they want to go all the way to the bottom where it says more. So they click on more. And then they go into course registration. There's going to be another list of classes and you'll see course registration is the second one, which will bring them to um, the enrollments for the 2023-2024 school year. So that's where they will click next. And as they move forward, this is where they start um, to enter their classes. So this might be a little bit hard to see, but um, the students are looking for 20 units before they have a full schedule. So right now with the schedule that's showing on the screen, they have two lunches and two advisories listed there. First semester and second semester lunch, first semester and second semester advisory. Lunch is worth two, so adds up to four, and advisories are both one, so you'll get two there. So at the start of where they're um, starting to add their own courses, they will have six of 20 already completed. So 30% complete, you can see that at the top. So they go to the bottom and they add, I think it says add courses. Yes, add course. When they do that, um, they can start typing a class in and um, the course will come up. So right now we're using, this is a um, pre-AP English 9 is what the student typed in. And you can see there are online options as well as um, the option for the in-class pre-AP English 9 class. So we want to make sure students are registering for the correct. If they do not want to be online um, and taking that through our EVP program, then they want to choose the other option that's there. Um, sometimes there may even be more options than, um, than they see on the, than this shows. So um, they want to add they want to click on the course that they are looking for, add request. Then they go to the back button. Can you go back one more time? And they then they go back, no forward. <laughs> <laughs> and they do the second semester. So they do semester one, add request, go back. Semester two, add request, and then go back. So and then they're starting on that second, um, the second class that they're going to add. So that you should see that all there in the directions. Now, if we go forward, <laughs> tech support is laughing. Um, we're gonna finalize once they get everything in there. You can see that this student has pre-AP English 9, intermediate algebra, US Gov, um, Earth Science, and there'll be other courses there, but they are sitting right here at the top. Their units are 20 of 20 and they are 100% complete. And that's what we are looking for. Are the most important thing is to make sure that they have seven first semester classes and at the end of each thing it will say S1, S2, the, the course number, and then we want to have make sure they have seven second semester courses. Another key thing is to make sure um, they know which courses are full year and which courses are semester long because some students will choose foods which is a semester long course. And then second semester, they choose foods and they've already taken it. So now we have a problem and we need to change their schedule. So um, as 
much as you can watch that, that's super important as they get to their 20 of 20 um, courses chosen. They also need four alternates. So they need four different classes. They're going to put it in by semester, but we're going to pull those courses from their alternates in a way that um, works for their schedule. So if something doesn't run, this schedule says that they want personal wellness first semester. If there's a problem with one of the other courses that they're taking, like it's not enough students registered for it, or it, it's at the same time as band or choir or something like that, where they can't fit it into their um, schedule, then we will go to their alternate list and we will pull from it. So even though this says personal wellness semester one, if we need it in second semester, we're going to steal it from there. So we would really like kids to put the alternates in, in order of their um, interest in the courses that they're adding. So if, food, if foods would be their first one that they would like to take, then put that in first. Personal wellness is their first and put it in there. So that's kind of how that we work the alternates. Um, then they add the alternates and they will stay in the schedule. And then there's a spot to fix errors. So Sandy, um, can yep. I pop in for a quick sure. second? Yep. For those of you who have seniors that are registering, mm -hmm. um, when your senior is entering their alternates, be sure that they add an English class as one of their alternate choices. Um, a lot of our English classes are singleton classes or they're not offered every hour of the day. Um, and so we do have senior schedules that get, um, that gets, that can get conflicted just because of how the schedule all fits together. So we really encourage seniors to please add an English class as one of their alternates. Perfect. Thanks. So if the student has errors to fix, if something doesn't allow them to um, to work in their schedule, it will tell you. And there's a place to convert classes to an alternate. So let's say a student registered for French, but now they're thinking they want to do Spanish. So they can convert French to an alternate if Spanish doesn't work. And then they can go back and add Spanish into their regular, um, their regular schedule that they want to take. Um, they can also delete this. So if they don't want French as an alternate, they can delete this class and go back to their other, the other piece of their schedule and they can add um, Spanish in there instead. So um, there's a spot to, to click to um, make sure that everything looks correct to you. And again, as I said, um, students can go back in as many times as they want and make changes. Every time they do it, it just automatically saves. So they don't have to find a save button. They can just click out of it. And when they come back, it'll be the same um, schedule that they put in. So um, I always like when pilots say cross check. So I wrote cross check on our. Um, so anyway, we're going to double check what they've entered um, on the second advisory. We're going to have an extended advisory on the 23rd. Um, and teachers are going to go around and have the student pull up their uh, campus schedule that they're choosing for next year. And they're going to make sure they have S1, enough S1s and enough S2 classes. Um, so that is something students should bring their um, devices to advisory on the 23rd. And then um, another thing for students to check, as I said already, double check the semester long classes are only listed in one semester and not in both. And then as you close out, it will automatically be saved. So um, now we're going to get to some questions and um, hopefully we can get to as many as we're putting out there. So um, maybe our tech support can help us and give us some questions. So the first question, what exactly is college algebra and college algebra prep? Is that a good option if my son doesn't exactly want to take calculus? So the three classes um, that follow algebra two are, um, are college algebra prep, college, that's the first choice. Second choice is college algebra and trig. 
And then the third choice is pre-calculus. So the college algebra prep class is probably the class that if your student is not, um, math is not perhaps their favorite subject, CAP would be a good class for them to take so that they are continuing to work on their math skills. Um, because once kids go to college, and this is the other reason why we do recommend um, kids stay in math for their senior year, um, is because, you know, once they get to college, they will more than likely need to take a math class. And having a year and two summers off of math is a long time to have a gap in math. So we always recommend that kids continue in math. So with that being said, um, CAP is, is, the first, is the first type of class you can take. College algebra and trig um, is that next level of math. And it can also potentially get you um, college credit from Bemidji State University. We have an agreement with them. It's kind of a college in the schools class. And so that is also an option for students. Um, and then finally, pre-calculus. If your student is thinking they are going to move on to calculus, um, calculus or Calc AB or, you know, BC Calc, um, pre-calculus would be their next class. Is enriched, the next question is, is enriched like AP? Enriched is in between a general class and an AP class. So um, there, it's not going to be a weighted grade where an AP class is weighted, um, but it is showing a lot of interest in a course. So if a student is interested, we have classes in science that are enriched, um, they are going to go more in depth into the subject. So if a student is taking enriched chemistry, enriched bio or enriched physics, those classes would just show that they have more interest in them. Um, and that they're gonna, they're gonna do a little bit more work than the general classes, um, but it's gonna be definitely somewhat for someone who is thinking about their uh, moving on in science at some point, um, they might want to have a career in science or with some science related, um, some science related um, majors. So um, that's kind of the difference. AP is definitely college level. Um, it is the, the first year AP class that they would find in college. So if they're going to, that's going to go even more, as Lisa said, deeper and there's going to be more breadth of the class. They're going to get through more material. The next question, would AP stats be a good 11th grade option for a 10th grader currently in pre-calc and then calc AB in 12th grade? Yes, that would definitely, that would definitely work. So um, it really depends on what your student is interested in. Um, AP stats can be taken at any level. So we have students who might take it after pre-calc. Um, we may have students that take it after Calc AB, but yes, that would be, that would definitely be an option. Yes, Latin is uh, an option. I think it got, it was put into the students PowerPoint for advisory tomorrow. And I don't think it got into the, the one for tonight. So. Yes, Latin is an option in the World Language Department as well. Students, current juniors who took pre-calc and then opted to take uh, college algebra and trig as juniors instead of AP calc. So students who are in that, um, that are in that group of kids, um, they can certainly take the calculus class that we are offering if they would like to do that. They would not necessarily need to take AP Calc AB, um, but that would be, I mean, calculus would be a good next step for them because they have taken the pre-calc class and then they have gone um, to, you know, redo the college or not redo, but take the college algebra and trig courses as well.
We're having a small tech issue right now. <laughs> Are there courses besides PE and health offered in the summer? Not by Edina High School. So um, any courses that are that a student would take in the summer, um, depending on their grade level, if it were a Northern Star Online or a Tonka Online or um, a college level course, um, some students will go take a class at Normandale. Um, those courses will all be something that a student has to pay for. Okay, let's be real, that you have to pay for. Um, and um, the only ones that are offered by us are the PE and health in the summer, taught by our teachers. Does world language in middle school count for credits required for college? Um, so it really, um, ninth grade Spanish. So if a student is in Spanish in ninth grade, my guess is they are either in Spanish one or Spanish two. Um, that does not, at that point, you're looking at the level of Spanish or the level of that language, not necessarily at um, how many years they've taken middle school into high school. So the number behind the class is the num the years that they've taken. So if they take um, a level two at the high school, the colleges understand that they took the level one at the middle school. So yes, we're looking at the number behind the- Behind the, the language. language level, yeah. yeah. Do you need permission to take a different or harder course than your teacher recommends? Um, you do not. Um, we typically, I mean, that might be a more specific question for your student's teacher. Um, you know, you want to make sure you can, right? You can. So that, I mean, that's in answering the question. Yes, you can. Um, you may, you may want to think about that, however, and think about why, you know, you could always ask your, your student's teacher, um, why they suggested that and have a, a short conversation with them about what your thoughts are as far as what they can do to be successful in that next class. We really want your kids to be set up for success. And so that's why we truly recommend to students that they follow the recommendation of their teacher. And the likelihood of changing if it doesn't work out is um, it's harder. So we've had, we started this year with some classes that were already full and for students who wanted to drop an AP or an enriched that the teacher didn't recommend, it wasn't possible. So they had to stay in the class that they were taking, even though it was overwhelming them. The next question is, if a child has an extracurricular for many hours, um, weeks, does that count toward a health or wellness credit in or fine arts? And it does not because those coaches are not, um, are they are not certified teachers and um, they can't give credit. So it has to be by someone who has the, um, the degree and can um, award credit. The next question, if my son takes French and band, and it can be, you know, anything, right? Will he have to drop one in order to get all the other required classes? No, he will not. So if you look, um, we do have a four-year plan linked in all of the Schoology resources. And so you can look um, at that link and kind of plot everything out and really be thoughtful about where... Um, you know, where your student may take a class, may not take a class, et cetera. You don't necessarily, your senior year, there's a lot that opens up. So let's say your student may not be taking, they may take one science class. They may not take a full year science class. They may take one social studies class. They may not take two social studies classes. They may just take their one econ. So that frees up a class period that they could fit in health, that they could fit in PE. So you've got some options and some opportunities that way to get that done. And the band then gives them their two years 
or their two credits of fine arts right away in ninth grade. So they're done with those. So then it just leaves the, and then they could do, if they can, a health one summer and a personal wellness another summer. And that leaves one PE left um, that they could take in their senior year. So it really is doable um, pretty easily. Yeah. The next question, what is Calc AB and Calc BC and how are they different from AP Calculus? So AP Calculus, it's AP Calculus AB and it's AP Calculus BC. Um, both of those calculus courses are college level calculus classes. Um, the AB, the AP Calc AB course covers about 60% of what the AP Calc BC course covers very quickly. Um, so students who are currently in pre-calc, they will get that recommendation from their teacher as far as whether or not they should take, potentially take Calc AB, Calc BC, um, and some may even recommend them to take the regular Calc class next year again, just to kind of work on some of those skills before they take um, an additional Calc class. Can a junior take pre-calculus and AP stats in the same year? They can, um, but they have to have room to do that. So um, it, it would be a little bit tight. It probably would make more sense to do that in senior year when many of the other requirements are already taken care of. Um, but it is possible if there's not a music and a world language that are taking up the spots. If a student starts in one language and wants to change, does that still count as their four credits? Um, so as far as world language goes, there is no graduation requirement um, with regard to world language. So um, it is a recommendation from college, from four-year colleges and universities that students have at least two years in the same world language. So if a student, if your student currently is in Spanish two, um, if they are, you know, if they are doing great in Spanish, they can certainly move on to Spanish three. Um, many colleges and universities four can be kind of a magical number in that, um, but it's not necessary. And if they have other things they need to take, want to take what have you, we can certainly have those conversations with them. They can also talk with their current language teacher to talk about what, um, what might work best for them. Does a summer AP bio class count as accredited class for the next school year? Uh, yes, we do give students credit for the classes they take in the summer. Um, so if they're gonna take a prep class for AP bio, um, we'll give them credit if they ever take it at Northern Star Online. Um, I do believe Tonka Online has a pre-AP bio class that students can take. Um, and I asked a student the other day, one, she, she took Tonka and a couple of her friends took um, Northern Star and they were comparing and, and both were very well prepared. One covered some of the material more and the other one covered some of the other material more, but they all got the things that were most important um, for that, that AP bio class. So, so yes, we will, if summer, if students are taking um, anything to prep for AP chemistry, for prepping for um, AP bio, they can do that in the summer and we will give them credit for it. As long as it's a Tonka on, it's long as it's Northern Star Tonka online and if you have questions about that, you can certainly have your student come in and talk with their counselor about it. <clears throat> can a rising senior take a PSEO class at a community college over the summer and have it count in their credits and GPA? Thinking more along the lines of an econ class. Um, PSEO only pertains to classes that are taken during the school year. Um, if families are interested in paying for a class at a community college, then that is um, that is something that you can definitely explore. Um, yeah, <laughs> I, I would say you know that is um, 
you may want to come in and talk with your counselor about that specific econ class if that is something that you are interested in. Um, because it's an econ credit, um, you know, you want to make sure it's the right type of class that you would be taking in the summer. Um, also, you know, lots of community, I have found that lots of community colleges are really keeping those spots open for college students um, and not necessarily high school students who are looking to take a class in the summer. So, but we would put it on their transcript. Mm -hmm. So we would give them credit for it as long as the student brought us their transcript or the, the community college shared it with us. Yeah. Um, and it does count in their GPA. But it is something you'd have to pay for. Right. <laughs> it's magic. You have to be Her Hermione Granger. Um, the question is, how do you take... Geometry, Algebra 2, Precalculus, and Calculus in three years. <laughs> um, well, often students take something in the summer. Um, unfortunately, and I don't think it's any of our recommendations to take a class in the summer. We do not want students to do that. But um, geometry is um, one of the ones that is recommended to take in the summer. So um, that would be a place to start. And then when they complete that class, they would register for it, um, then take it in the summer, and then we would change it to Algebra 2 the next school year once we have the completed uh, transcript with geometry on it. So it is possible to do it, and then that opens up their three years. But colleges want you to be calc ready. They don't necessarily need to be have you have taken calculus. So that's one of those recommendations. For a student who takes a full year course in the summer, they are looking at three, four, maybe five hours a day in the summer because they have one month to do one semester and they have one month to do the other semester. I so feel like they get a better handle right. on the, the class if they take it here at school. So you really want to be mindful of what your summer looks like. Like if your student is already signed up for community service trips or what have you, it's going to be really hard for them to get that, to get that full year of math done over the summer. So um, we would like to thank you all. We're going to wrap it up for tonight. So we'd like to thank you all for being here and joining us today. Um, as we stated in the chat, um, be sure to reference our materials and check in, have your student come in and, um, meet with their counselor if they have additional specific questions about their specific situations. Um, but really, like I said, like we've, Sandy and I have stressed, the resources that we have put out on Schoology and that are on our website and all of that, um, it is very comprehensive um, and really helpful. And your kids' teachers are also here to help and answer questions. So have a wonderful evening and thanks again for joining us. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, tech support. <laughs>